Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Worship Splits with Terry. Today we'll be looking at a tech tree, in particular at the Soviet cruiser line. Now actually the early cruisers were not yet Soviet cruisers, but they were Russian cruisers because they hadn't they haven't had a revolution yet, so they were actually still the Russian Empire. Regardless, let's uh, quickly have a look through the tech tree and just see what these ships are all about and kind of how you how you would play them. Now we we're going to skip over the first two tiers. The Booker tier is kind of a tier three, is kind of uh, like a St. Louis in, in the American tech tree. Uh, lots of guns. The Svetlana at tier four starts being kind of the uh, a, a first light, uh, light cruiser that um, that shows up in this in this line. Again, this is rather similar to the American line, with the difference being that um, that uh, her torpedoes aren't that great. So that's one thing you'll find in the Soviet cruiser line for quite a while. The torpedoes, while they're existing, are usually just for short range or opportunistic usage. So you will not go and try to actively torpedo someone in a Soviet cruiser because you don't have the range and the damage for it. They make up for that, though, in guns. For example, this Svetlana here has, has 15 130mm guns. They're actually, well, you could say destroyer caliber guns, but she's got a hell of a lot of them. And they have a quick reload, and they do an excellent high explosive damage, and uh, have a decent chance of setting a fire for a tier 4 ship. Plus, well, the torpedoes, again, aren't great. 3.9 kilometer range. The small caliber torpedoes, not the greatest amount of damage. They reload quickly. So if you're in a brawl with destroyers, that's when these things come in useful. Or if you can manage to, well, outflank somebody and then it just drop some torpedoes into them. The After the Svetlana, at tier 5, you're going to hit the Kirov. Now, the Kirov is the first cruiser which gets a ship skill, which is the air defense alert. You could think that they will start to become support cruisers. And, well, maybe a bit, but certainly not as much as the American cruiser line. These things are a bit, a, a bit different, but we'll get to that. So again, Tier 5 doesn't have much in terms of armor. Uh, still a light cruiser. But she gets 180mm guns, which is a relatively large caliber for a light cruiser. I don't even know if she would still be classified as a light cruiser or a heavy cruiser, because it's something in the middle, really. Uh, taking forever to reload, but they have an excellent fire chance, and they do a they can they their armor piercing again packs a serious amount of punch against other light cruisers with 180 millimeters. You you're basically an upgun for Utaka in this thing without the torpedoes. Well, she has torpedoes, but again they're well, they're short range. Uh, and finally, they're 533 millimeters, so they do start making a little bit more of a of a dent in the, in something that they hit. But you only get two triple launchers, so really ignore the torpedoes. These things are all about the guns, and the guns are excellent on these things. Now, once you're you're done with that, you come to tier six, and you end up with the Budioni, and then. The second ship skill starts kicking in, which is the precise aiming system, which already gives you a hint as kind of what these things are. These things are HE spammers. The Budioni is back to um, fast speed, good turn time maneuverability, no armor whatsoever, as is as is common for uh, a light cruiser in that tier, and uh, back to 150 millimeter guns. 7.8 second reload, which is about the same I think as the Nuremberg gets. Excellent fire chance, rapid firing, nine, um, 150 mils, nine of them. These things are there as fire starters. The torpedoes, again, not a great range, four and a half kilometers. You only get two triple launchers. Don't try to torpedo anyone with this. We, you don't want to get close to anybody in a Soviet cruiser, at least not in a Soviet light cruiser, because they don't have much armor. It's a much, much better... A uh, much better way to play is to stay far away and set everything on fire and just burn it down. The, um, again, she still has the anti-air defense, which is useful both as in a support role, if you're staying close to someone, and kind of keeping keeping planes off your back a little bit when you are when you are uh, sailing sailing uh, sailing out by yourself and shooting at things. Then after the Budioni comes the shores. Ooh, the shores is fun. So while the Budioni had 
uh, no armor, fast speed, and 950 millimeter guns. The Shores has no armor, fast speed, and 1250 millimeter guns. <laughs> the the amount of fires you can set with these things is absolutely staggering, because well there there are there are like japanese cruise japanese the japanese heavy cruisers are going to have a higher chance of setting fire but they don't have that rate of fire uh, i've got the shorts down to almost 7 seconds with 100 with our 152s so every second 7 seconds you sh you shell out 12 relatively precise sh shells that have a 6% chance of setting fire when they hit and then in second 7 seconds you do it again um when i'm in a battleship and i'm starting to get to get uh, focused by one of these things, I usually disengage. Because A, there's no way you're going to catch them if they know what they're doing. There's no way you're going to hit something this this maneuverable at, ten, at over 10 kilometer range. And all the meantime, they keep setting you on fire. These things are pesky as hell. Uh, torpedoes, same story, nothing great. They're there. Uh, you can use them if destroyers are trying to rush you. But and honestly, if, if anybody in a destroyer tries to rush you in in one of these things, um, just switch over to the armor piercing, uh, switch on your engines uh, because they can't catch you because you are doing 35 knots. So anything but a Soviet destroyer is going to have a hard time actually catching you if you don't want to be caught. And just keep casually lobbing 12, 12 uh, 150 millimeter shells per salvo at them, armor piercing. And they will very, very quickly see the arrow of their waist um, or the bottom of the sea, whichever comes first. Now that's tier 7. At tier 8 you get the Shapayev. And I haven't played the Shapayev, but um, on, 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 the, on the book she looks, well, pretty much identical. You get 12 152mm guns, they're the same excellent 150mm, uh, you get the same sort of torpedoes. You maybe get a slightly improved AA, but that's roundabout issue. I think you get another precise aiming charge, but um, other than that, uh, I think they're very, very similar. Now, the Dmitry Donskoy at tier 9, it starts become, to become a little bit of a different thing. Again, I haven't played this ship, but you're starting to actually see some semblance of, of armor showing up. These things are a little bit harder to crack. Um, so that's the thing with Soviet light cruisers, like with all other light cruisers, really. Um, you do need to stay far away because if you let anything with big guns coming close to you, hell, if you let anything with little guns coming close to you either, um, they can shoot you very bad and hurt because you have uh, you you have tissue paper for armor. So again, Donskoy, very quick. Uh, she has she's back to the 180 mils, but with a bit of a faster reload than the Kirov at tier five. And um, I haven't tried these guns. They look fun. 11.5 seconds is a little bit long, but you know, you can use modules for that sort of thing. And uh, she actually gets some semblance of working torpedoes. We've got a six kilometer torpedo range, which is completely unheard of in Soviet ships <laughs> up to that point. So uh, while you still don't have a large amount of torpedoes and they don't do a huge amount of damage, you can actually maybe occasionally hit something with them. And she has, well, a decent amount of anti-air plus the improved precise aiming. So again, I would say these are long range, long range ships. And at tier 10, we get to what people often call the battleship Moskva, which has been misclassified as a cruiser. Now this thing is different. Uh, for, for, for once, she's actually starting to have some semblance of armor that you could maybe compare with a tier five battle cruiser, <laughs> maybe. Um, but uh, so she, she's a bit sturdier. Uh, she has her, she gets a bit more sluggish. She gets 220 mil main guns, so uh, definitely uh, again upgunned from from the Donskoy, but uh, faster reload, which is um, which is good because while uh, while you have these, you no longer have torpedoes. You actually now have secondary guns, which really looks more like a battleship than a cruiser to me. I've, is she a battle cruiser? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, we'll see when I when I actually get to play this thing. Decent anti-air, but um, they're not mainstay AA ships. Again, I would play these as ranged ships because that's that's what these. I mean, twelve point three kilometer range is excellent with the main guns. Just stay away and uh, rain hellfire down on your enemies and make them regret their life choices. So. 
that's what you've got to look forward to in the Soviet cruiser line. I have played the Soviet cruiser line relatively early, so it's been absolutely ages since I've been playing anything but the shores. So let's go out in the shores. Actually, before we go out in the shores, let's have a quick look at the shores. Let's see how I've set this thing up. So I've already mentioned low, relatively low hit points, uh, no armor whatsoever. Uh, fast speed, 35 knots, good turn time with seven seconds. You do need to bob and weave and not give broadside to things. The 152 mils, seven second reload, 6% fire chance. So high explosive is a good choice against probably anything but destroyers or other light cruisers at close range where the armor piercing, which also have a very, has a very good um, damage output, uh, comes in handy. Torpedoes, short range defense only, and uh, an, an acceptable AA really. Surface detection isn't great in these things. I've um, I've put everything into I put this into the gun operator, and you can already see from the elite bonus that this is a gunship. Right? This is not a torpedo boat or of any sort. So you can choose between firing range and reload time and traverse. And given that the traverse was relatively poor, I've gone with reload time because I think a range of 11 kilometers is already quite workable. But that would have been totally legit as well. Um, the the equipment, I've got the main battery mod 2 for, for reload time, and I've got full-on uh, steering mods to make her more maneuverable and make her make it possible to dodge shells. The commander has got nothing really surprising. Underwater protection, torpedo alert, the artillery maintenance, because I do want to stay at range, and uh, it comes in quite handy at the beginning until you start taking some damage. Victorious charge. I haven't I haven't gone with the fire supremacy because I generally find that the rapid reloads are enough. Uh, I'd rather get the fifteen health fifteen uh, percent HP recovery because uh, yeah, <laughs> I will eventually get the marksman skill because that's really useful for precise aiming and that usually compensates for the lack of the additional charge. Uh, exploit weakness actually makes sense because you will set things on fire. That is your main objective in this thing. So there we go. Uh, I've got a camo on it. That looks way too American to put it onto it. Um, it'd be nice though, because it's a gunboat camo, but um, we can have it We can have it look Canadian, American, or um, neutral. I'm gonna go with neutral here, because I really <laughs> I don't want to go out in an American camo on a Soviet ship. That just feels wrong. All right, let's do this. All right, bottom tier. Are we? Oh, there's a failed platoon. There's an Arizona, Fiji, another shores. Two double fail platoon. Okay. Let's see. Uh, so two two tier sixes in a tier eight battle. Let's see how they're gonna hold up. And we're playing Aurora. On domination, so well, we'll park ourselves behind one of these little islands there and see if we can set something on fire. We start out with the armor piercing, and um, we'll see where that gets us. We have two destroyers. What else have we got? Pensacola, Fiji shores. Let's go. Who's going there? There's a Duca. That's an HE spammer, so he can cover that side, and I'm gonna go over here and see that I can use this island here as cover and basically keep the lid on B cup if we can and just prevent the enemy ships from from going forward anywhere all right that should be about far enough I'm gonna stop here ish and see what comes before I go any further any further in that's one battleship heading over to C A cup seems uncontested I'm detected so one of the destroyers is somewhere near Oh, there's a Pensacola. Let's see what we can do with the armor piercing against the Pensacola at this range. Obviously. Okay, the Duca can deal with the... Uh, switch over to the high explosive. That might be a better choice. Okay, there's another... Sh there's a Shores. Now the Shores gives broadside to all these battleships, so hopefully they can deal with him relatively quickly. And... Um, we can see what we can do to help. There's some torps, unsurprisingly. 
And we're just going to go into the second row here. Because we don't want to push that far. The shorts is way overextended. And I think he just realized that. Ow, that hurt. And if any of the battleships could find it in their, in their heart to just um, shoot that guy, that would be grand. Okay. Seriously, there's a, there's a sitting duck shores out there. Okay, there's an Akatsuki as well. So, let's see that we deal with the Aka. That's my job. Speed out, he's probably dropped torps. Precise aim uh, where are you turning? About here-ish. Okay, now the tops went for someone else. Okay, there's a Bismarck. We do not wish to broadside a Bismarck. Move. We want to be away from the Bismarck. Oh, please damage Conrad. Please damage Conrad. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we don't want to be too far away, so we're not getting ourselves out of the battle. Uh, the Akatsuki is back. Mm, he's a bit too far to reliably hit from here, but let's see. Uh, this is one. Let's see that we can do something about this Bismarck and make sure they're not coming through here. And just keep moving. Let's see if he's firing on us. Or if he's focusing on a low health key there. Yeah, I think he's focusing on a low health battleship. But once the battleship's down, we're next. So we kind of have to make sure we're going around here, not getting ourselves too far out of the battle. Also because we're only controlling one cup right now. Okay, that's the Bismarck on fire. That Helena is extremely low as well. See that we can set, get another fire going and just burn this guy down because he's taking out everyone, which is un unfortunate. Okay, speed out because I think we're going to be next. Okay, he's turning. Okay, that one's probably going to miss because he's shooting too short. Yep. Okay, fire is out. Good job. Okay, we need to get back forward because we are... Yeah, you're not keeping me with your secondaries. Can we dive under this? Or... Ow. Not quite. Okay, before he's reloaded, that's another fire going. Okay, that should be the end of him. There we go. Fiji next. I'm just going to stick with the high explosive here. We don't have much time left. Um, and we're going to switch over to the armor piercing. And because we, need to, we don't have time to deal with the Fiji. Although he just controlled the fire, so it would have been really nice. But we're getting close enough that we can use the armor piercing to relatively devastating effect. Now Fiji's got torps, it should be around about now, so I'm gonna turn around. And the armor piercing just does more damage. Did he just torp? Okay. Torps where? Where are torps? Full ahead. Oh, there's a destroyer right behind me. Oh crap! I didn't see the Aka. Well, it's too focused on the Fiji. But he's the last guy, and I've got 15 seconds. Come on. That should do it. 10 seconds. There we go. <laughs> All right. Whew. I did not even see that Akatsuki. Uh, yep, the Juka did what the Juka is supposed to do. Uh, well done. Whew, that was a close one a little bit. We only had 10 seconds and they were leading on points. But uh, we did make it. And we did 71,003 71, destroyed. How much did the Duca do? Okay, the Duca got the other four. <laughs> ah, well done, well done you. Okay, give you a compliment. 
By the way, does anybody know if these compliment things work or if you actually receive them? Because I've never seen that happening. I keep doing it, but um, holy hell in a handbasket. Look at that carry the, the Duca and myself did out of our team. We've got 145,000 damage. And the rest of the team has what 50 60 80 we, we together we've got more damage than the whole rest of the team done <laughs> all right so yes um we only did about eight thousand fire damage but um even if you don't get that many fire set the get the guns you just keep firing the guns and they alone do an enormous amount of damage so these are excellent gunboats. Uh, they are an absolute joy to play. You have to be a bit careful not to get too close with them. And you really, really don't need to. But if you are close, um, using the armor piercing against like the Fiji, for example, was dispatching him relatively quickly. And against destroyers as well, she's absolutely devastating. So I, I'm thoroughly enjoying these ships and I'm looking forward to the Shapayev. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.